Hey guys, Mike Builds. Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this Yoshino Solid State Portable Power Station. So what's interesting about this compared to like a Jackery or an EcoFlow or all those other ones is this has a solid state battery. I've been hearing about it for years. I'm sure you guys as well have been hearing about it as the next newest technology and battery technology. I decided to scoop one up. I've actually never had one of these power banks before and I can think of a lot of uses to where I would need one. So I decided to get this one and do a review video for you guys because mainly I want to see what the battery looks like, the solid state. I want to see what that's all about. So so in this video, we're going to take this thing out. We're going to unbox it, show you guys everything it comes with, kind of go over the unit. We're going to do some testing on it. We're going to do full load testing, you know, a bunch of stuff like that. And then we're also going to take it apart and we're going to see what's inside of it. And at the end, we're going to kind of give our overall thoughts. Let's go ahead and get it open and take a closer look. All right, let's go ahead and open it up. See what we get. Dang, look at that. That's the first thing you see is thank you. So we have this. This is going to be all your manuals and instructions and all that stuff your AC to DC charger. And this is gonna be, these are gonna be all your other adapters. We have the car cigarette lighter, we have the solar charging cable, and we have another cigarette adapter of some sort. So we're gonna look at what that does. That's pretty cool that out of the box, it comes with a solar charge lead. That's awesome. I'm definitely gonna try to solar charge this. See how that works. Okay, you know what, wow. All right, so here is the unit itself. So you have two AC plugs right here. It says DC out. You have two USBs as well as two type C's. One of them is 100 watts, one of them is 20 watts. USBs are both at 2.4 amps. Okay, here we go. This is where you actually charge it at. So there's your solar input and then the other DC input. So these are just gonna be outputs, not inputs. Here's what the bottom of the unit looks like. A little data tag there. And that one right there. It looks like right here it has some holes maybe for cooling. It's got a little thing right here. I'm not sure what that's for. Kind of sticks out. Maybe you can hang it on something. Same on the other side. Overall, this thing feels very, very nice in the hands. Man, they did a really good job of this thing. It feels like a very high quality product. And I want to say I paid about 250 bucks for it. Like I said, the biggest thing that drew me to this is the solid state battery. So we're definitely going to have to take a look at that and see what that's all about. Okay, here's all the accessories you get with the unit. So this is your wall charger. This takes 120 volts AC and it puts out five amps. So it should charge it relatively quick, I would assume. This is your cigarette lighter to XT60. So what you're going to do is take this and it would plug into the back end unit like that. The wall charger actually has the little jack that would plug in right there. You also get this adapter cable. This is also an XT60 and this plugs into a solar panel. So that's awesome. I'm going to have to see what the maximum voltage of the solar panel input is. You got to make sure you know that so you don't go over that and damage the unit, but we're going to find all that out. And this particular one looks like it's a 12 volt out. So what you would do is plug this in like that. And then you could plug in 12 volt devices from there, phone chargers or anything like that. It doesn't say what the max output is, so we're gonna have to find that out. But that's all the cables you get. Plenty of things to get you going, I think. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what it does. All right, here we go. It says to protect the battery, charge the unit up to 80% every three to six months during long-term storage. Nice. Okay, let's see what that, uh, let's turn it on. All right, so if you can see on the display, it has a hours counter. So I'm assuming this will calculate how much time you can run your load based off of how much power you're using. You have a battery charge indicator right here. As you can see, they ship the unit with 56% power. I wonder what this little button does. It's like a Wi-Fi button maybe. All right, if you look at this button right here, click this, get a little flashlight, pretty cool. So if you're using it like a tent or something. But yeah, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing fully charged up and then we're gonna start testing it. As far as specs go, they rate it at 330 watts of output power. It has a 241 watt hour battery. It says it'll do 480 watts max. So I'm assuming that's gonna be like your surge capacity rating of the inverter that's built into it. Okay, if you look here, there's another button that says AC. If you see this button right here that says AC, you're gonna go ahead and click that. And as you can see now, it shows a wattage indicator and that means your AC ports are on. And the weight of the unit is 9.9 .9 pounds. Go ahead and turn it off. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing charged up so we can actually start doing some testing with it. But my initial impression is it's actually very nice. The way they package everything is super nice. It even says thank you when you open the box. I mean, how many products do you buy that says thanks? You know what I mean? It comes with a good amount of accessories. Nice little set of charging cables right there. So I think pretty much everything you need to get started. So I'm actually really excited to have one of these. Despite how many batteries and little things I've built over the years, I've actually never had a charging station or a portable power station like this. So I'm gonna be very excited to use it and we're definitely gonna put it through its paces and see what's inside and really kind of give this thing a, really wanna put this thing through its paces and see what it's all about. Let's do it. I'm gonna go ahead and charge the unit up so we can start messing with it. Also, I didn't mention this, but this button is a Wi-Fi button. So there is a phone app you can get with this. So we're gonna see what that's all about 
as well, but that's very interesting that you can connect your phone to it. I'm assuming you'll be able to monitor all the stats of the machine and see how much power you have and all that good stuff. And just because I was curious, I was curious about how much solar it could take because I think that's really cool. And it says it'll do 100 watts and the voltage has to be within 30 volts to avoid product damage. Actually guys, I was thinking before we start messing with this thing and testing it, I actually wanna take it apart because I'm sure you guys wanna see what's inside of it. So we're gonna go and very carefully take this thing apart and take a look at all the components and the battery itself just to kind of see what everything looks like, kind of see what the build quality is like. So we're gonna figure out how to get this thing open. Any hidden screws? No, there's no hidden screws there. Okay. I'm gonna try to do this as least destructively as possible because I do wanna use this thing. It's very, very nice. Okay, be right back. Let me figure out how to actually open this. Okay, I think I got the corner right here to pop off a little bit. I'm sorry, Yoshimo. I'm not gonna destroy this taking it apart, guys. I'm gonna do my best to not damage it, but I have to know what's inside. See, that don't make no sense. It's like this has to come off, man. Oh, there we go. Okay, there's one cover off. There's a bunch of Phillips head screws in there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull all those out. You guys, don't take your stuff apart at home if you don't know what you're doing, okay? Not a good idea, okay? That's a long bolt. Maybe I should be paying attention. Okay, the ones on the sides are longer. I brought a hammer too. I didn't know if I'd need it. I didn't. Oh, something's coming off. I think it goes like this. Okay, whoa. Oh gosh, a lot of wires. Let me see if I can't start unplugging some stuff. Let me get you guys in here. Check it out. Let me get some more light. Kind of see that. Let me get you guys a little lower. So there's like a main circuit board right there. There's another circuit board at the top right here. That's the big circuit board. That's like the screen and stuff. And here's the actual battery. So we're going to try to rip into that and see what that looks like. Well, let me get this off. Let me disconnect all these cables so I can lay everything out so it looks a little bit better on camera. But that's what we got so far. All right, guys. So this appears to be like an inverter board of some sort. You have these little like XT maybe 40 style connectors on the side of the battery. So that's really cool. Same with that side. Kind of see in there everything. Oh, look, it's got a little fan too. Nice. So this looks like the main inverter part and the battery part. There doesn't seem to be much more in this. We are going to keep continuing to tear this down. See if we can't get a better look at that battery. And then here's a better look at the front control panel. So this is the front of the unit right here, as you can see. The quality of this thing is amazing. All the connections are potted with this silicone stuff to help the connection stay secure. But there is no match for me. All right, guys, so I have the battery and inverter board loose. Just took out a couple more bolts. I'm going to carefully lift this out of the shell. I think I got all the connections loosened. So there's the back of the shell. This is really thick material. It's webbed and very reinforced. It has little inserts for all the... They're not screws. They're actual bolts. They have these little brass inserts that have threads in them. That's the charging board on the back, and it goes up into the battery right here. So I'm gonna put that over here out the way. So this is the actual inverter board itself with the battery underneath it. So it looks like they secure the inverter to the top. There's the cooling fan if anyone's interested on that. I know I would be. It'll focus. A little bit close up of the inverter. Appears to be pretty good quality. There's the FETs. Pretty standard, I'm sure. I'm also curious if the output of this is pure sine wave or modified. Sure, it's pure sine wave, given the quality of this unit. I don't see why they would cheap out on the inverter board. But I'm gonna go and remove the inverter board from the top. That way we can gain access to the battery itself. And I'm gonna see if I can't remove the plastic shell so we can actually look at the cells themselves. All right, got the inverter loose from the battery. It appears that the battery's shell, this is all molded as one piece. There's no way to split this apart. So I think the battery is gonna slide in from the top and go into this plastic shell. So let's go ahead and pull the top of this apart. I'm just going to very carefully lay this over. All right, here it is, guys. Here is the solid state battery that is inside this. What you're looking at is the world's first solid state battery inside of a power bank. So this is probably the balance connector going to the different cells. There appears to be down there a BMS, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to get it out without pulling all this out. And I don't know how much further I wanna really tear this down. This looks like to be maybe a fuse or something inside of that. But this is the actual battery itself. It's literally this, 
this package is the battery. So that's pretty impressive how small that is. And it looks like just like a pouch cell design. So if you guys are familiar with like lipo batteries or some, and there's some more close-up information on the battery, maybe you guys can decipher some of these numbers. It has a weird voltage, 14.88. 1P4S. All right, interesting. Maybe I'll see if I can't pull this out and we can look at the cells themselves. Okay, after taking a closer look at this, it looks like the battery is actually potted into this plastic casing. So I don't want to risk puncturing it or messing it up. So this is about as far as I can get. If there's any specific shots of anything y'all want, just let me know. But this is probably the best I'm gonna be able to get right now. There's really no other labeling or anything on this thing. And like I said, the, ba the BMS is way down there. But there it is guys, that's the solid state battery inside the Yoshino power station. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing fully assembled and make sure it still works. Another shot of that, another shot of that. All right guys, we're outside. I have a 100 watt Harbor Freight solar panel. We have the adapter harness right here. So we're gonna go ahead and connect this to the unit, connect it to the solar panel and watch it charge with the sun. Yeah, that was smooth. As you guys can see, we're getting about 85, 87 watts. There's a tiny bit of cloud cover coming in and out of the panel, but that's pretty good. Right here, it'll tell you how long it's gonna take to fully charge it. So that's it, guys. I'm just gonna leave this here and let it charge, but it's pretty cool that you can actually just do that. So you literally take a solar panel, connect it right up to the unit, and you have a full solar power system pretty much in the palm of your hands. Alrighty, guys, now we're gonna test the full power output of this unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on, and I'm gonna connect up what I call my inverter dyno, which composes of this big, 48 volt battery charger that I use to charge my 48 volt system. So the inverter is rated at 330 watts continuous and it says it'll do 480 watts max. So I guess we're gonna start with a 330 watt load to see what that does. Here we go, AC output's on. We're at 100% state of charge, as you can see. Now I'm gonna get the dyno going. Right here, you will be able to see the actual output of the unit. Let me go ahead and set this thing to very low amperage. All right, there's 170, we're creeping up on See what it does now. It's 200 watts. Let's add a little bit more. All right, we're at almost 300. It's kind of jumping around because I'm sure the charger isn't exactly stable. I'm gonna crank it up a little more. That says 4.6 amps on the charger. Okay, as you guys can see, the unit actually is overloaded by you know a couple watts. So I'm gonna keep cranking it up and see how high we can go before it actually trips offline. So I'm gonna add another, I'm doing 5.6 amps. I'm gonna do another amp. No, I'll do another half amp, see what that does. So it's rated at 330. It did over that for like a little bit and it didn't seem to mind. 380 watts, 370, 390, it spiked for a second. Still going, let's crank it up some more. Oh, did it trip? Oh, it did trip. Look, it's blinking the AC. I wonder if we, uh, that's probably all it can take. Let's try it again. Let's see how long it'll run. Here we go. We have the charger connected, six amps on the charger. There it goes, 200, 300, 350, 380, 400, 420. Up there when it just tripped. So it looks like it can do about 350 continuous. If you go over 350, when it was pulling about 380, it did shut off after about 30 seconds. If you go over 400, we, the most we saw was 425, but it looked like it sustained 420 and it only lasted about 10 seconds. So that's kind of the overload you can expect from this. But the fact that you can go over 330, which is its rated continuous, is pretty good. Obviously this thing's so small, you really wouldn't want to run a huge load like that anyways, because it has such a small battery, 241 watt hours. But it's also good to know that it does have some sort of, for how small this is, you can, you can get a lot of power out of it. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what you guys think of this thing. I'm super happy with the build quality, as y'all saw, and the fit and finish in the hand is so awesome. These companies are getting so good at producing such, I guess you could say high quality products. It really feels like you're getting your money's worth. Nothing looked cheap. My personal plan with this power bank is to use it to run my laptop when I'm doing automotive related stuff, like when I'm tuning cars or logging data. It's good to have a power supply for your laptop. And I was able to run my laptop off of this for about six hours continuous. Now granted the laptop only uses about, you know, 30 to 50 watts at a time, but it was awesome to be able to have this in the car with me, my laptop connected, and I was able to do everything I wanted to do without having to worry about the laptop dying. You know, things like that, charging your phone, all the ports, it's really awesome. I guess that's gonna do it. Let me know what else you guys wanna see me do with this thing. I'll catch you guys in the next one.